Hi everybody and welcome back to some more MotoGP 19. This is part number 22 of my career walkthrough and in today's episode we head to Spain for Jerez for round four. Now this is a tough circuit and the last time we raced around this circuit it was absolutely pissing down in Moto3. I'm going to keep my fingers crossed we get a dry race because I think it's so much better in the dry round here. So let's get straight into the qualifying session and see if we can get a decent spot. Hello from Jerez. There's some action in the pits as the first qualifying session is about to begin. There are still four spots available in the second qualifying session for a chance at pole position. Since the rain stopped a few hours ago, the weather has finally cleared up, but the track is still pretty wet. So I'm guessing that at least for the first part of the session, the riders will choose rain tyres. That is not a bad corner. And yes, we're up at sector one for the first time. Sector 1 seems to be one of the sectors I really struggle on. Let's just try and be careful. Slowly open the throttle. It's so hard to put the power down. Now we've got more power at the back wheel. On this Moto2 bike, it's going to be so much harder. Right, let's try and break a little bit. Oh my god, we tried to break a little bit later and we totally overshot the corner. Now it's going to be one of those races where it's all going to be down to really good throttle control and, um, and braking. And at the moment, I'm really struggling. I knew it was going to rain. I knew it. As soon as I said at the start of the episode, I'm hoping for a dry race, I knew I'd get wet conditions. But if it starts raining for the race, it's going to be horrendous. I've seen so many crashes in the practice session. But at least we've managed to earn some development points. And we've just dropped some time on sector three. So we need to pick it up on this final sector. The final corner is going to be a real difficult one. There was so much dive bombing going on in the practice session and if we get that in the race and it was the last corner that I saw most of the dive bombing going on so I'm going to try and take a wider line and try and stay away from that inside because that's where they seem to like to go right up the inside of you and that's not too bad right to the line is this going to be a better time than we did on the previous lap oh that's not bad Right, so we've put in the fastest time in Q1, but now we move into Q2, and I'm pretty sure the times are going to be a lot quicker, so we're going to have to push a little bit harder. So let's get straight into that session and see if we can get a really decent spot. Right, let's go on another lap and see if we can put in a faster time. I don't think that 153.4 is going to stay there. So we might as well. You get... Oh, be careful. Almost lost it there. You, you get five sets of wet, so you might as well use all and I'd only used three so we got to, I used the fourth set and then the fifth set will be for the race let's see if we can just and again we just got a little bit wider than I would like in that first corner but I'm pretty sure that time ain't going to be quick enough and I really want to get front row especially in these conditions going into that first corner just trying to put the power down but it's not easy for the brakes. I mean, I, I think that um, sometimes in these sort of races, it's just slow and steady. I don't think you have to go really gun ho into the corners. I think it's if you can get a nice steady pace, it should be okay. And I've just got a slightly quicker time at sector two. Let's see if we can get a quicker time at sector three. And tight. Okay, we've got enough time to put a couple of laps in, I think. So let's see if we can at least, I reckon, another half a second quicker, and we should be, I should be able to get pole position. And just keep it steady around there. And oh, we're up at sector three as well. Can we just get another far sector? The final corner is the one that's going to let us down. Hopefully we can nail it this time. Just keep it nice and smooth around there. Try not to overdo it. Right, let's break a little bit earlier. Let's get that front end turned in and let it turn in nicely. And that was much smoother. And to the line, this is definitely feels a little bit quicker. And oh, 152.7. Now I'm pretty sure that should be fast enough for the qualifying. The end of the second and last right so we took the we top spot in qualifying with a 152.7 and uh, let's see if we can do it in the race it is going to be a really difficult one in those conditions but i'm going to try my best so let's get straight into the race 
Hello and welcome to the Jerez de la Frontera circuit. Just a few more minutes before the Moto2 race at the Spanish Grand Prix finally begins. As you can tell from the footage, we're broadcasting from the track. We're looking forward to great weather for the race. Wow, that's a surprise. We got a dry race. That's throwing a spanner in the works. Well, anyway, let's get straight into it. Our starting grid, where riders and engineers are talking over the last few details before the race. Just a few moments to go until the start of the Spanish Grand Prix. These riders know it will be vitally important to take the first curve perfectly. Right, so here we go with the Spanish Grand Prix around the Jerez circuit in the dry. Let's see if we can get a decent start. And rev those engines and off we go. Oh, just trying to get a good drive without spinning up that rear. And that wasn't too bad. I will take that. And as you can notice, I've turned all the assists off again. I seem to be a lot quicker. And someone's gone. Oh, bulliger has gone straight off in the first corner. And that isn't a great start to his race. Let's try and take a wider line. We know they all shove it into that corner. And down goes someone else. That's two crashes so far. And we have dropped a few places down to P8. But let's just try and keep it nice and steady. We've done no practice in, in the dry around here. So I wasn't sure what tyres to go with. So I went with a hard rear and a front medium so hopefully that's the best compound it's really really warm in Spain so I know that front tyre is going to get chewed to pieces around it so hopefully we've gone with the right combination let's see if we can slow it down and hold it oh we've got a little bit wider into that turn I've literally got no setup for the dry my setup was for the wet so I'm literally thrown out by this I'm just gonna have to be steady and just slowly work my way into it. But we're sitting in P4, so it hasn't been a bad start. And it looks like it's Luti that's leading the GP. That's a surprise. I don't know what's happened to Marcel Schrotter. He's obviously had a really bad start. Couldn't really see him in amongst all those bikes since that first corner. And Luca Marini, um, Valentino Rossi's brother, is at the front as well. So let's see if we can just it onto this trio and got a nice corner there up to p3 just trying to be good on the brakes look how fast they fly into that last turn not as confident as that and that is not a bad first lap i will take that sitting in p4 we've slowly pulled away from the rest of the group i think uh, the lap times are going to be pretty quick in these conditions right, let's just try and get it nice and turned in we've got to manage those tires now i think it's the front tire that's going to take the most hit around here it's got a lot of really really difficult corners that wear that front tire down i could have gone with a hard front but uh with some of these corners you really I, I was a little bit worried that that may be really difficult to control so hopefully i've gone with the right compounds but uh, we will find out very soon and it's baldassari that is sitting in behind me and uh, we've got to be careful don't let them get back into the race and that's not a bad turn got a good drive slipstream and can we just go down the outside and oh they break so much later i'm really not going to take a risk just to see if i can keep it nice and tight and that's not bad i've just got to try and sort of get these tires scrubbed in get used to the uh the dry conditions and then slowly slowly push i'd like to at least get on the podium if i can in this race and really get ourselves in a decent position in the championship and that is not a bad turn there we've just managed to go around the outside just try and hold it just try and make those passes nice and clean if i can and that's not a bad turn as well going down the outside should be able to take that position and that is not too bad just keep it nice and steady on the throttle again nice turn there and we should be able to sneak past into p2 down the outside of luti but he's going to break really late and oh look how what, the way they just fly into that turn let's see if we can just get a bit of slip and stream and get past luca and hopefully we can sort of just push a little bit harder on this third lap so i'm starting to feel a little bit better on these uh tires they're starting to feel a little bit more grippy now the temperature's up a bit but i'm really no, I'm not breaking enough into the turns. That is where it's, I'm really struggling. I'm going too wide, and it's costing me a little bit. So let's see if we can pick it up. 
start hitting those brake markers. I'm, I'm just so, so much in a sort of uh, the mode that I was in, in the wet. I've got to get out of that mode. We're in the dry now, so I can push a little bit harder. Let's see if we can get a good run into this corner. It's not too bad. Should be able to get a little, little bit of slipstream. We should get past Luca there. Let's slow it down. And try and get past Luca if we can. It's a much better corner. That is much better. But he's managed all. Oh, he's managed to get back past. But he's managed to just retake that position. Let's see if we can latch onto Luti. This is a six lap race. Let's see if we can sort of get a little bit closer to him going into lap four. It's not too bad. Been so much better on the uh, throttle now. Starting to get the flow on this Moto2 bike. We still need to upgrade the engine and the frame. We've managed to upgrade the anti-wheelie and the traction control, though I've turned all the assist off. I, I, I've got no idea why it feels better without the assist. I think sometimes the assist make the bike feel a little bit unsteady. Um, I've got no idea why, but it just, it just feels that way sometimes. Ooh, just holding that inside there with Luti, but he's just managed to fall. Ooh, a little bit of contact. He's uh, got a little bit aggressive there. He didn't like that pass, so let's just give him the inside. We take the outside. We've still got plenty of laps to go. Just keep it nice and steady around there. And let's just slow it down. Keep it tight. Ooh, that front wheel is starting to get a little bit of vibration there. It uh, doesn't feel very uh, good around the turn. And as you can see on the tyre wear, the front tyre is actually wearing a lot quicker. Um, I wasn't sure how much the tyre would wear at the front, because I did notice on the wet so the front was going down quicker than the rear. Uh, so we could have gone with a hard front, but I just think it wouldn't have felt very good. And that is a nice pass, and we've managed to get past Luti, but he's probably going to beat us on the brakes into this turn. So let's just give him room, and uh, just make sure he doesn't shunt me off. Keep that wide line. Should be able to get a good drive around these next couple of corners and get back past. We started to pull away from uh, from Marini. And that is good. We managed to retake the lead. Just keep managing those tyres. Really trying hard not to spin up the wheel. And again, we've gone a lot wider, but it's given the others room. And as you can notice, even though I've got the anti wheelie turned off. I'm managing to control it a lot better. So we are starting to get used to this bike. Let's keep it nice and tight through there. Oh, that was nicely done. Right, let's try and have a really good last corner as well. Slow it down. And just giving them room so we don't get dive bombed. And that was nicely done. And we are starting to set a decent rhythm now. Going into lap five. But we've still got to manage these tyres, so let's try and be a little bit careful. It's nicely done again. This is the corner I feel the front tyre really not feeling very... S does it? I'm getting a lot of vibration here. I just feel like the front will go. Yep, it is not feeling that great. So we're going to have to be really steady now. And even if we have to back off the pace a little bit, we've got a little bit of a lead. Not huge. And yeah, oh, I'm telling what, both tyres don't feel very good. I went really wide into that turn. I just feel like I can't push it too hard. If I push too hard, I'll just slide off. Right, let's try and be careful around this turn as well. Sort of just let it coast around the turn. That was, oh, God, dear. The tyres are really not feeling great now. Sometimes uh, you've got to try so hard not to spin up the rear, the rear at all because it wears so quickly, especially in these conditions. And it really does affect you into the final stages. But looking at the grip on the rear, it doesn't look too bad. It's the front that looks most warm, but I'm still feeling a little bit of a, a little bit of a bubble here and there as I'm trying to take it at speed. Right, so we're coming towards the end of the fifth lap. And then we've got one more lap to go. Can we hold on to this? Definitely got some decent uh, breathing space. And that was much better into that final corner. Again, coasting it round. Right, final lap. Just got to stay on the bike. And we're going to take a victory 
in Spain around the Jerez circuit. Again, just trying to coast it around the turns, not using the brakes, just slowing it down before the corner and then just drifting round. That again was felt a lot better using a little bit less front brake now just to make sure I don't throw it away. And Schrotter is really far down the order. He's going to drop some serious points and that's going to give us the opportunity to pull away in the championship too bad around that turn. Come on Guna, you can do this. I'm really starting to pull away. I'm really surprised. I don't know whether the AI have had the same same problem I've had where we've practiced in the in the wet. So we're all ready for a wet race and then it's dry and it just sort of throws you out. You don't know what tyres to go with, you haven't got a set up. But I was expecting them to be really on it in the dry though, I must admit. But as soon as we get in front, they just, they've just dropped off. I don't know whether they went with different compounds. Maybe, maybe the riders behind me are on soft front and rear. And they're really struggling. And again, that wasn't too bad around there. The front tyre is completely shot. A couple more laps around here. And I don't think I would have made it, I don't think. Right, final corner. Don't screw it up here. Just coast it round. And there we go. We're going to take another win in this Moto2 season in Spain. And I was really worried about this race. When it was raining, I thought, oh, this is not what I wanted. But then I qualified really well. And then it was dry. And then it threw me out because I didn't have a setup. Didn't know what tyres to go with. But in the end, we took the win. Had the fastest lap as well, which is good. Now let's get into the standings and see what's changed. Right, so the final standings, we are on 86 points, 21 points ahead of Schrotter because he dropped some serious points in today's race. And again, we have extended the team championship lead as well by seven points. So all in all, it's been a really good round. And in the next episode, we head to the Le Mans circuit in France. And if we get rain there, I'm not going to worry so much because I wasn't too bad in the wet. So, but that is a very challenging circuit. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe, share the videos. And I will see you very, very soon for some more MotoGP19 here on this channel. See you later, guys.